Hi, it's Mitra Sorrells in the Focus Wire studio at Focus Right Europe. We often run interviews with industry leaders in a feature that we call In the Big Chair. And here at the conference, we are doing some In the Big Chair live sessions. So joining me today is the CEO of the World Travel and Tourism Council, Gloria Guevara. Thank you for joining us and taking a few minutes to talk. Thank you for the invitation and for having me, a pleasure. Wonderful, so let's start by, what do you see as some of the biggest challenges facing the travel and tourism industry today? Oh, that's a great question. As um, you probably know well, WTTC, or the World Travel Tourism Council that I'm honored to lead, represents the global private sector. We have a little bit over 170 CEOs as our members. And I joined this organization in August 2017. And one of the first things that I did is I asked them, what are the challenges that in your mind our sector is facing? So we had the opportunity to talk to all these CEOs one-on-one -on -one and get their input. Basically, what's keeping them up at night. Right. And they came back with multiple things, but there were three um, that they were repeated over and over, regardless of the industry, because our CEOs represent multiple industries, airlines, airports, hospitality, so TAs, travel companies, car rentals, GDSs, all of them. Okay. And what was fascinating is to see that the challenges are the same. So three challenges that we see. The first one is uh, security and travel facilitation. In the past, we only talk about travel facilitation. How do we make it easier to, for the traveler to move from one country to the another? Now we also talk about security. Okay. And for that, we have an initiative called Seamless Travel Journey that we're using, we're proposing to use technologies such as biometrics. Some countries are ahead of that, like for instance, the US, you see Dubai, Singapore, and, and, and some other destinations using biometrics. Because if you look at the data, for instance, from Mayata, last year we broke a record, we had more than 4 billion passengers that number is going to double. And the question is, we're not going to double the number of airports, right? Right. How do we maximize uh, the, the infrastructure that we have and are more efficient because more people traveling means more jobs at the end of the day. So, and that's part of the challenge. So we believe technology is the solution. So uh, security and travel facilitation is one of the challenges. The second one is crisis. Crisis preparedness, crisis management, crisis recovery. Because it's not a matter of if, it's when and where the next crisis is gonna hit. And when I say crisis, it could be a tourism attack, it could be an outbreak, it could be a natural disaster, or it could be a political instability. But the point is that we need to learn from the past, we need to learn from different experiences, and we need to be prepared, and the private sector has to engage with the governments to have that preparedness, and also to recover faster. So crisis management, top priority okay. for the global private sector. And the third one, which is equally important, is sustainable growth. The okay. growth in travel and tourism has to be good, it has to be inclusive for everyone, and it needs to be responsible. So what's included in sustainable growth? It's included, for instance, our climate action, the climate and environment responsibility. We have a responsibility. We need to protect our assets, natural, cultural assets. We have things like overcrowding. It's very yes. popular nowadays, especially in this part of the world. Yeah. When they talk about overcrowding, tourism phobia, we have an initiative called Destination Stewardship to tackle specifically that and how we help these destinations to plan forward and to move uh, to have a better growth in their destinations. We talk also about the future of work. 47% of the jobs that we know today, according to the experts, are gonna disappear or be transformed. But the reality, when we look at the jobs that they were created last year and the year before, and the last five years in the entire planet, one in five were in travel tourism. Wow. So we have a big responsibility to make sure that we have the growth and we know what jobs are gonna be the future jobs, right? So future work is another important priority as part of this sustainable growth. Of course, we have also some responsibility or what we call social responsibility initiatives, such as we launched an initiative against human trafficking. How do we yes. help to reduce or eliminate human trafficking? We have a huge responsibility there. And another one is the illegal wildlife trade. How do we protect 7,000 species that are in, in, in risk of extinction if we don't stop uh, the travelers to purchasing those um, assets or, or, or those species? 
So that is part of this sustainable growth priority. Those are the three challenges that we see. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about some of those. So specifically related to the biometrics and the seamless traveler journey. That's something we hear a lot about. We're constantly getting updates on this is being tried here and tested here and that sort of thing. But what do you see, what are some of the challenges to really enacting something like that on a global scale? I mean, you've got pri the private sector, you've got government, how does that work? We um, have done a lot of work in this to understand what's out there. And I have a, a team dedicated just to look at this. And to give you an idea, there are a lot of initiatives going on. We look at 53 different initiatives, and you can divide those 53 in three different types. Initiatives that they're uh, driven by private sector engagement. So it could be, for instance, in a cruise, that they use biometrics to identify the passenger to provide a better experience, right? There are some initiatives that they are between the government and the private sector together, like, for instance, what's going on with some airports and right. some immigration officials where they share data to give you better experience. There are some other initiatives driven by governments that what they are trying is because they want to capitalize on the opportunity of growth, they want to be more efficient because they, they cannot spend more money hiring more officials, having longer queues, and all of that. So as I said, there are 53 initiatives. Now at the same time, we see initiatives like in the US, U.S. Is, is moving really fast. It has yeah. like 20 pilots already. They compared, they have decided to use facial recognition and they compared my face with a database that they have. And within two years uh, time frame, they will be using facial recognition for arrivals and, and exits on international, which is great because uh, they will allow you to move fast and the low risk passengers are going to be able to be in and out of the airport in a short time frame. Your face is going to be your boarding pass. Your face is going to be considered for arriving through the entire process. So they're not going to be asking you multiple times. Now, in the cases like Europe, we have what I call one-to-one. -one. They compare your face with your passport, right? Your biometric passport. But if you don't have a biometrics passport like me, you cannot be part of the, the, this initiative. So the challenge that we have right now, and, and, and that's what WTTC plays an important role, we work very closely with IATA, with CLIA, with ACI, with the web, with all these organizations to uh, try to get an alignment because the entire sector is not, private sector is not aligned. Right. And many governments are waiting for us to have that alignment because at the end of the day, there is not uh, enough to have one country or a portion of the travel experience be seamless. The ideal situation is to have the entire experience to be seamless, right? right? What is the yeah. benefit for you to use biometrics just for boarding? If in immigration you have to do a two hours line, there's no value. So it has to be end to end and one trip. And right now we're working with multiple players to try to come up with three or four pilots, including multiple airports, multiple airlines, non-air, hotels, cruises, car rentals, and travel companies. And then once that we can test the model and have all these different technologies connecting because it needs to be totally agnostic to technologies and vendors so that is a space for everyone to be part of this ecosystem we wanted them document the benefits and right. hopefully move everyone towards that direction so we went from assessment to alignment right now we're in alignment okay. then we're moving also to testing there's a lot of tests has been done but as i say in pieces now let's have some tests round trip and then after that, documenting and then the adoption is crucial. It sounds like the kind of thing that maybe once we hit a certain kind of tipping point, it'll really will, start to exactly. go. Exactly. Yeah. I, I, I see that. Once that we start like getting some traction right. and all these systems connected, and, and, they, and the other thing is there's not going to be one solution that fits all. Right. Because the governments decide what works the best for them, right? And from the private sector, we already have great models, like for instance, the airlines use the advanced passenger information, the cruises use our, perhaps other systems, some PNR, whatever is the case, but we need to be able to connect all of them yeah. for the benefit of the traveler. Right. And, in some, yeah. and the traveler needs to decide, do I want to be two hours online or I provide my photo in advance in exchange for a fast track? Okay, so let's talk about some of the other topics that you brought up. This idea of sustainability and particularly in relation to, you know, what has been called over-tourism or, you know, cities such as Amsterdam where we are, you know, 
announcement from the Netherlands, I think a week or two ago, about wanting to not promote the destination as much anymore. How, how do we get to shift away from using those metrics of numbers of people, numbers of visitors, numbers of guests to define success versus switching to a more holistic view? I mean, that's kind of a whole mind shift. Here, there are a couple of things. Uh, first of all, in WTTC, uh, we have done research for more than 25 years. We compare um, 185 countries around the world and like a little bit over 60 cities. And what we do is we look at not only arrivals, we look at the impact to the economy, the GDP growth, right. uh, the impact of and the, and the spend, and, and that's what we call the, uh, the impact of uh, travel tourism GDP and the jobs that they are created. Now, we're in the transition of looking at some other indicators to look at the social impact and, and the environmental impact and, and other things. But for now, we have a lot of information for 25 years in economic impact and the contribution. Now, that being said, you have these mature destinations, right? And, and this uh, topic about overcrowding is starting to surface in 2016, I believe, or 17. And WTTC partnered with one of our members, McKinsey. And we came up with a research and a study that basically defined what was happening and define what was the reason of this overcrowding, when the local residents felt alienated, when the tourist was not having a good experience, when we were impacting the natural assets or the cultural assets. Those kind of situations, that's when you have overcrowding. And we right. did an analysis to understand the impact. Now, as a result of that, now we're moving in the next step that is called destination stewardship. How do we help these destinations to build this path to move forward. Here in Amsterdam, for instance, it's important, we had a very good session this week with the stakeholders of Amsterdam. I learned what you just say. Yeah. They don't want to promote more Amsterdam because right. they're concerned of having more people, but they want to have different type of visitors also, right? So what at the end of the day is crucial and based in what we have research is that we need to move from the concept of public-private partnership to public-private community partnership. It has to be good for the community. The community has to be in the center. It's the same than the traveler. If this is not good for the community, it's not good for the traveler, it's not good for anyone. It goes to the sustainable growth. So we are working together with our members and the different players to help these destinations to find, as I say, and build this path forward. The challenge is, of course, every destination is unique. Is different. Perhaps what works in Barcelona might not work here. But, but the methodology to get there is the same. It has to be inclusive. We need to consider all the stakeholders. We need to understand what is the DNA of the destination. In other words, how do they want to promote themselves? What do they think about the destination? What's unique right. and what's different? In the case of Amsterdam, I'm sure that you heard. I heard um, this week here on Loud that they don't want to be associated only with the red light district. They don't right. want to be associated with, uh, you know, the, the type of consumer, right? Right. They want to also be associated with the culture, the history, uh, the canals and, and the flowers and all the amazing things we have here in Amsterdam. Right. It is very important to have a long-term plan, to take the ownership and to decide where is that they want to go and with all the stakeholders together, help them to get there. And I suppose some of the more emerging destinations can certainly learn from the example of absolutely. what some of these other ones have, yes, have gone through. So. Because there are some great cases, like for instance, you have Orlando, that was built from scratch, Cancun, same situation, did not exist in, before 70s, right? right? Dubai, another great example. So it's easier when you start planning from scratch. And when you have a destination that has had some growth organically, right? Right. You need to now stop, decide, okay, what do I want next? How do I move forward? And how do we do it together, including all the right stakeholders and all the players? So let's let's shift a little bit and talk a little bit more about you and some of your background. So I know you worked for Sabre for 15 years, Yes, correct? I used to work for, first of all, my background is technology, and yeah. my degree is in computer science. I used to work for NCR, Okay. And Saver was my customer, and then Saver hired me, and I worked for Saver for 15 years. Yes. So, you know, arguably that segment of the industry has really evolved more in the last decade than 
it did in the two decades before. I'm wondering your thoughts on how distribution is changing and how a player such as Sabre and others can evolve or have evolved. Well, it has been fascinating. First of all, to me, um, the, the opportunity that I have worked for Sabre is kind of unique because it gave me a good understanding of how um, the different industries or what I call the sector works, what happens behind the scenes that is very sophisticated, we take it for granted. I mean, in the airlines, revenue management, crews, uh, and the assignment of the planes, you know, everything that goes when before the flight, right? The pricing, the tariffs, I mean, the inventory, all the way to the cruises, the hotels, the car rentals, the entire, um, what we call travel chain is, is very sophisticated. Right. So there's a lot of technology behind the scenes. I remember a long time ago that they were saying that internet was going to replace distribution. The reality was the opposite. Internet helped to even foster more travel, right? More people are, are, are traveling. They were saying that internet was going to replace travel agencies. And, and that's not the case. There's a space for everyone in this wonderful yeah. ecosystem. And Saver and Amadeus and Travelport and, and, and all these technology companies have been able to um, shift and at the same time help us to grow the ecosystem, uh, developing amazing technology that also has allowed some other players to join uh, in, in this ecosystem. And has been, uh, we have seen a, a very interesting growth in travel. Yeah. And at the same time, there's also space for new players. You have a lot of startups. Now yeah. in our members, for instance, WTTC has members, not only travel companies, but companies that they do business with travel. Google, one example. Yeah. Uber, Airbnb, and of course, Visa, MasterCard, all of them use technology. And, and that's yeah. fascinating. The technology has allowed, and the mobility, of course, Right. And, and, and the iPhones and smartphones and changed all of that everything. has yeah. changed the way that we travel and it has impacted not only one piece but the entire experience. So before we wrap up, I'm curious if you can think back, tell me what might you tell your, your 20 year old self now that you're here today, if you could talk to yourself back then? Well, when I was back then, as I said, I was working for NCR and, and my, even I never studied travel or tourism. So I chose this sector because I always had passion for travel. So this, this is my choice, no? I think um, I never imagined, I mean, now, you never imagine the, the changes that has, we have happened. seen just yeah. in the last seven years. When you think about it, the iPhone was not that long ago. Right. I think it was 2000 and, what was it? Um, when was seven, that? Seven, eight, maybe? I was think the, seven the, or eight when yeah. that was announced, released, and the iPad in 10. Yeah. So you see all these changes has been amazing, no? When I look back, as I would say, this is the right industry. Invest more time learning and, and, and trying to innovate. I think to me, as I say, it was a great experience. And also, from Saver, I went to government. That that's another one that I was a minister of tourism for Mexico, yes, secretary yes. of tourism for Mexico. So I had also the chance to see that from another perspective. Then went to Harvard for uh, all the sustainability and, yes. and sustainable tourism. So I had the view from different angles. And I think that was fascinating and I had the opportunity to learn and, and now it's easier for me to see the impact. Yeah. But this is a wonderful sector that has opportunities for everyone. And I will encourage more people um, to join this sector from other sectors because I mean, once you are working for travel, you never leave. That's what like everybody says. Yes. Every, everybody says, that's a common saying. So that's, that's thank true. you so much for thank taking you. time to talk. Gloria Guevara from the World Travel and Tourism Council. Thank you for watching. Thank you.